What is up my dear friends, today we are going to do 8 complete different starter tests. If you are first time to the channel, subscribe and click that notification bell, you won't miss any videos. And for the test we need a battery, we need a jumper cables, also we need a multimeter. If you have a alligator clips and then at the ends, nice, if you don't have it, it's alright. We need a screwdriver, we need a jumper wire. And of course we needed our starter motor, we have a few more of those ones, but we're only going to use one of them. And the safety goggles! Alright guys, let's get begin and I'm going to show you how to do it. Those 8 complete starter tests, you can put on pause and read and we're starting with number 1 right now. And We'll take readings from, you see the red line, that's a constant high current battery power supply to the solenoid, that's that. Also ignition uh, command wire, low current, and field coil terminal and the connector. And also we all know that the uh, starter body is a ground and our chassis is a ground from the battery. Be careful not to let your fingers, clothes, jewelry or any loose it cut in the spinning pinion gear. Just watch what I'm doing, I don't need to talk much after this point, I only will tell everything what's really necessary and enjoy the listening music and watch how to test the starter. Alright. If your starter is good, pinion gear will move forward and spin. This is what good starter will do, okay? This is what you want to pay attention to and be careful with the spinning pinion gear. That's uh, what we're checking right now. And this is a starter motor assembly test number one. And we're jumping into the test number two. Test number two, solenoid test. When you touch the ignition power supply to the solenoid, that pinion gear should move forward without a spinning. That's what you want to see. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. And also share with someone who will need the information. Okay, test number three. We're testing starter motor, okay? When we supply the power to the starter motor field coil terminal, that starter should spin the pinion gear without moving forward. That's what good starter will do. And now time for test number four starter internal electrical test where set your multimeter to volts and connect the clips how i'm doing okay i'm connecting positive clip to the positive side of the battery we see the battery voltage and when I will engage the starter right now as you see the voltage drop this is what we want to see test number five starter continuity test Switch your multimeter to continuity with that audible symbol on the display and test the continuity between the starter terminal that should be open and that's what we want to see because starter is not engaged and connectors is not bridged. Okay, now starter motor resistance test, test number six switch to the ohms 
resistance and we're going to check the ohms at the copper windings of the starter motor and uh, you need to get a good ground and it, the resistance should be around 0 0.1 ohms if you see ol open circuit that is not acceptable and time for test number seven ignition switch power and battery voltage test at the starter okay ignition key into the starter position and we should see the voltage at the command wire at the starter solenoid if you don't see the voltage it could be multiple problems we're going to do another video how to troubleshoot the no crank and we also will check the voltage supply from the battery to the starter at the starter high current terminal that's what you want to do and always check the ground if you have a bad ground corroded that can be the problem as well All right and sometimes starter pinion gear can stick and you can just tap with the hammer slightly this kind of number eight that's an issue sometimes happen and then try it again as you can see it's moving the starter is good this is our demonstration here we go, we're almost done and one more thing to talk about and a little bit of basic theory actuating starter solenoid which inside the plunger connected to the fork to the pinion gear moving operating the fork causes pinion gear engage with the ring gear also plunger contacts to close breathe them and main starter contacts then starter begins to turn only when pinion gear is engaged with the ring gear starter stays engaged until the key in the starter position after return spring brings fork back and disconnect the starter contacts that's basic what i kind of think and need to tell you that you probably know already and there is a starter this starter from old nissan it was our patient and uh, yeah, thank you so much guys for watching, subscribe, and if you would like to support my small hobby YouTube channel, watch this video or that one on the top or on the bottom, and see you soon!